Hey, what's up guys? This is gonna feel really good to make this video. Um, it's been about a month since I started this project. The project being what I have just been calling the i9 9900K 2080Ti Cougar Conquer Build. That's a mouthful. I think I need to give it a real name. Um, maybe at the end of the video we'll give it a name. But for right now, uh, I want to give you like this whole big summary. Some of the people who've watched all my other videos, that's great. Um, if not, no big deal. If you want to know all the little details, all the pains that I've gone through putting this together, all the little things step by step, feel free to check out those other videos. If that sounds like it's just a little bit too much for you, no big deal. This is a summary for you. It's going to give you the TLDR version, right? Um, so today's video is going to go show you everything so you can see what it looks like and go over the different parts, the names, the model numbers, and how much everything costs. All right, we got the ugly mug off the camera. There you go, guys. This is this is what you wanted to see. Who cares about my face, right? So this is the computer. This is the, the finished system, and it's obviously not turned on right now. Um, this is what it looks like when it's idling. There's some little RGBs on, but let's fire her up. Oh, no, it doesn't work. Just kidding. All right, so, man, where do we start? Where do we start with this thing? Let's take a little walk around tour, okay? Let's start at the back. Back panel of the motherboard, give you a little view inside the computer case. It's gonna give you a bunch of little nooks and crannies view here through the plex, I almost called it plexiglass, through the tempered glass, it's fancier than plexi. And the cam profile for the fans is not on. Let me turn that on one second. All right, sorry about that, guys. We've got the fans running correctly. You know, everything's got to be perfect for this video, guys. I don't want some just plain Jane White fans. It's got to be RGB nuts craziness, right? So anyway, back to just showing you quickly around this computer, giving you some looks at all the little details. Not going to go into too much looking at this because we're gonna go look at all these parts individually again in just a minute. But here's the back, the rat's nest. I think in one of my previous videos I said I wasn't able to get the back panel back on because the wires were too fat, but I was able to get by with squishing them down with the panel. Um, but yeah, that was, that was not fun putting together all this wiring on the back of the computer. Um, and as you can see, we've got it overclocked at 5.1 gigahertz um, and it's at 32 degrees just idling here so pretty good temperatures video card is even better 26 degrees celsius um, that's just idle it goes up a lot more obviously okay so we're gonna go over all the parts guys but i'm gonna show you one thing this is this is where i want people that are watching this video to give me your feedback i want to know what you guys think and why so this is like the side blade that is supposed to be on the case um, and if you watch any of my previous videos, the color this came in looked really bad. This is, oh, easy to show you. Like this is the color it came in, not orange at all. It's like a, it's like a red. Um, so I bought this carbon fiber 3d vinyl. It's like a wrap material. And I wrapped this, that 3d carbon fiber look. It looks way better this way, but now I'm almost, I'm feeling like maybe I, I shouldn't put it back on. So I'm gonna put it on for you guys for a second and let you guys decide. Tell me in the comments, put the blade on and why or leave it off and why. All right, this is the system with the orange blade on it. And one thing I already don't like about it, obviously I'm trying to sway you to say you don't like it, but it needs to be, if we keep it, I guess I need to bend it because I, maybe you guys can see this, but it, it's like angled going toward the computer instead of being straight and parallel with everything it's going inward so it needs to be bent back out anyway so let me know what do you guys think i'm going to take it back off though for the sake of this video so you, one of the, the reason why i don't like it is because i think it looks really cool don't get me wrong but then it blocks the waterway and the waterway is like got to be one of the coolest pieces of the whole build so it's gonna take it off and come back oh wow 
Yeah, guys, this is the spreadsheet of everything that is in the system and the things that I used. And I got to tell you guys, I mean, this is an insane list of parts. Um, the summary, the quick summary is that there were 38 different things purchased. Quantity, quantity is a thing. Some of these things have more than one piece. So like some things are six packs or eight packs or even 12 packs. And so some of that's not like saying that there's 38 pieces in the whole spreadsheet, but that there are 38 individual purchases and there's a lot more than 38 individual parts in the system. To put that in perspective, I mean, a normal computer, I think, is probably 10. Maybe 10, 10 to 15 parts, depending on, like, how many fans you use. But, like, a really basic gamer build, I mean, we're talking just the case, power supply, motherboard, video card, CPU, heatsink, memory, hard drive, SSD. Um, and then, you know, you've got your case fans, probably. But And I'm probably missing a couple little things, but we're talking about less than 20 individual parts, whereas this is, like... A whole other level 50 plus probably 60 to 70 little pieces um so it took a lot more time but it was really fun so i'm gonna go down the list guys and i will show you the the piece if i think it's worth mentioning and i'll try to do this a little bit quick so that this isn't like a 30 minute video all right the case is the cougar conquer case you already know what that looks like it's huge um we've got the i9 9900k processor um, we have the Maximus 11 formula motherboard by Asus. Uh, you can't see a whole lot of it, but it does have the built-in, uh, VRMs. Sorry, the built-in water-cooled VRM by EK Waterblocks. Pretty cool. Um, that one is worth mentioning on the price. It's a really expensive motherboard at retail. The, the, the price on Amazon right now is $428. Um, since I sell refurbished Asus parts, I was able to get one refurbished and my cost is lower than this, but I would normally sell them for around $330 as refurbished, factory refurbished. Uh, next up is the video card and very similar story. This is a an Asus RTX 2080 Ti turbo card. So this is kind of like more of a basic 2080 Ti. It's a blower style card. Obviously I've modified it for water cooling. Um, those usually retail for just shy of $1,400 at retail brand new. Uh, mine was factory refurbished and we sell those for about $1,100. So again, and I pay a little bit less because I make money when I sell that, but um, you know, save a couple hundred bucks and get a refurb if you want to. I'm not saying you have to, but I like to do that myself. Um, we've got a Seasonic 1200 watt power supply. Uh, it's titanium. I've had this thing for a long time and I, I couldn't really even find one for a normal price online, brand new. Um, I just estimated to be around $300 and I probably, I think I paid like 50 bucks like two years ago because I, the, I got it used. Um, it's uh let's see radiators. We've got a top radiator and a front radiator. We have the thermal take Pacific CL 360, 64 millimeter thick copper core radiator. And that thing is, this thing is massive. This is this thick as the top radiator. It's excellent cooling capabilities. And as I said, copper core. Um, and then we've got the front radiator, which is another Thermaltake Pacific series. This is the CLM240. It's also a copper cord radiator and it's 40 millimeters thick. So thicker than an average radiator, but thinner than the gigantic one on the top. And then we have the Thermaltake Pacific. Um, let's see, it's called the Rad Plus LED panel that's mounted on the side here with the RGB lights with its own controller on the back. Um, and next up, we've got the Bixky RGB waterway. That is this guy right here. Um, these are really awesome. I have mentioned in one of my other videos that it, I couldn't get the fluid, all of the coolant all the way to the top there. I think if I kept messing with it back and forth, back and forth for a while, I could definitely get it almost to the top. But for me, it's not really that worth it. Cause from back here, you, who notices it? It's just not a big deal guys. Some people would probably, but it might bother some people. But um, these were, this has the pump built in. It's, they run about 250 bucks. Um, I think that's a lot of money for what it is, like the materials of it, but like you can't, you just can't get it anywhere else. So that's, you either get it and pay that price or you don't. And I did have to cut some of the, see that kind of gross looking corner up there. I had to cut away with the Dremel uh, and I had to uh, cut away at the radiator just to get that to fit. Um, all right, so we've got the coolant. We're using the EK Water Blocks EK Cryo Fuel solid premix that's this stuff right here 
it is deceiving because the bottle has a little bit of a white tint to the bottle. It's actually much more orangey than the bottle makes it look. Um, so I had two bottles of that and I used like one in a quarter in that system. Um, and those are a thousand millimeter bottles. And next up, we've got the Thermaltake Pacific uh, G one quarter inch digital display with alarm. That's this guy right here. Um, those are really hard to find. I had to buy it on Amazon for like 80 bucks and it shipped from United Kingdom. So I think that's probably a really high price for what that is, but I couldn't find it anywhere else. And I really liked the look of it. It also has that cool little, see that little ticking thing in the corner, top right corner. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, we've got the EKWB uh, Velocity CP water block right here. It's a copper base with plexi top. And then we've got the Ve same same series vector uh, water block on the GPU here. And um, I talked about that in another video, how I was thinking about getting like a pre-built water cooled card from Zotac or some other manufacturer and how I, I actually think this ended up being way better looking and actually a lot cheaper. I saved a lot of money going this way with the refurb card and then the EK water block on it. Um, all right, next up we've got the, um, let's see, the tubing, XSPC PETG, and that's 10 millimeter ID inner diameter and 14 millimeter outer diameter OD. It was an eight pack. They were, it's not too expensive. It's like 25 bucks, I think, for an eight pack of these tubes. And the tubes are like, I don't know, two feet long or something like that. It comes in a, um, sorry for going under the desk here. It comes in one of these things right here. All right, so that's our tubing. And then we have all these fittings. So Iron Buddy 90 degree fitting. That's what these are right here. They're chrome. These are super cheap. It was like less than 20 bucks for a six pack. Um, and they're, you, I don't know if I recommend them guys. They're, they're, there's a reason why they're cheap. They're, the quality is not that great. Um, we've got the XSPC uh, G one quarter inch to 10 millimeter slash 14 millimeter black chrome fittings. That's kind of a mouthful, but that just means these guys right here. So these are all over the place. There's 22 of them throughout the build. Um, next up we have the bits. We have a bunch of the, the different bits power things. So we have um, the bits powered same thing. All these sizes guys are gonna be the same thing. Okay, so it's G uh, and quarter inch. And then that's also always gonna be 10 millimeter inner diameter with 14 millimeter outer diameter. I'll just stop saying that because it's gonna get redundant. But we've got the male to female extenders and those are 90 degrees too. So I, not only do I have these 90 degrees, but I have black ones right here. Um, and these actually have threading on one side. So it's male to female. Uh, and so those are more, depending on where you're doing the, the turns, it, sometimes it's more useful to have the male to female. The bits power are way higher quality as well, just so you guys know. Um, let's see, so we've got those. And those were, we had to do two four packs. So we had, we had 10 total 90 degrees, some, two chrome and, ten, and uh, eight black. And then we have the Bits Power exhaust fitting, which is right here. Um, and so if I press that, that will release air pressure from the system. It'll bleed the air. Um, we have the uh, Bits, sorry, the XSPC. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I skipped one. Bits Power Premium uh, Black Sparkle top caps, basically. These little caps, I bought it as a six pack. I only I'm only using three, so I have three extras. But they just look, they're just nice looking caps. Um, and then we've got the ball valve, which is right here for draining the system. And I have another piece that I connect to this right here when I want to drain. Um, and then let's see, we've got the Fantex premium sleeved cable, orange cable kit. So that's these right here. And then the uh, 24 pin and two eight pin VGA. I never clean, put cable combs. I have some clear ones on there, but I, I never put the black ones on. I, I could clean that up. I just don't really want to. I'm kind of over that stuff. Um, so I had to get the regular kit, plus I had to get an 8-pin on the side for another 8-pin CPU, 4 plus 4, um, to make sure that I had both the 8-pins for the uh, motherboard provided there. Okay, so then we've got the uh, We Meet 48-piece cable comb kit, and that's just these little black guys here. Um, and then we've got the Vivid XPO Orange 3D Carbon Fiber Vinyl Wrap. That's what I used on this right here. And I've got the NZXT AER RGB 120 millimeter Gen 1 fans. That was a three pack. I've had these for over a year. They were kind of just laying in a drawer. Um, 
so the pricing isn't really normal anymore and you shouldn't go out and buy these. There's no reason to, you should just get the Gen 2s, which I have in the front here. They look pretty much the same, so it's not a big deal. But when you mix and match these, you need to make sure you're using them on different channels of your Hue 2 controller. Do not ever use a Hue Plus controller, guys. Just don't do it, okay? Just trust me on that. Um, the Hue 2 is pretty good though. So I've got the Gen 1s up here, three of them, and then I have two Gen 2s connected. Everything's connected to the Hue 2. And the kit, this this came as a kit with two fans and the Hue 2, and the kit is 100 bucks. Um, then I've got two Samsung 960 Pro 512 gig NVMe SSDs, and I have those in RAID 0. Can't really show them to you because they're underneath a bunch of stuff. Um, and then, and I had those laying around here at the warehouse. Those are free. We just had pulled them out of systems and there was no cost on them. Um, and then I have, so th that's like my OS drive with the RAID 0 and then my output drive if I'm making like, vi if I'm doing videos, um, like this video we're talking about right now, when I, ha when I go to record this video or sorry, not record it, but edit it, my output recording file is gonna go onto this one terabyte uh, Samsung 950 Evo and it's a two and a half inch SATA. That's mounted onto the back of the case back here. It's right there. So uh, back here, and I'll show you this other stuff too. We have the NZXT Q2 to control those fans I was talking about. Uh, we have a thermal take controller here. It's probably really hard to see with the tint on the glass, but that controls the panel up here. And then um, we have a fan, it's a basic fan controller to control the fan speed. All right, so we're almost done guys. Uh, we've got the cable mod vertical PCIe bracket black, black color, that's to make the uh, video card vertical. Uh, we have the Elect top chassis fan hub, 10 port, it's a 10 port fan hub, fan controller, whatever, it's the thing I just showed you a second ago on the back. And then the coolant bottles, you gotta get coolant bottles for filling. This could have gone in the tools section probably, but it's made by some brand called Axicle. It was just a three piece plastic safety squeeze bottle, 500 millimeter bottles. There's a three pack and they were like 10 bucks for those. So that's pretty much everything in the build. And if I would have paid full price for everything, it would be about $4,900. So that that's obviously a ton of money. I would never expect most people to ever want to consider spending that much money on a computer system. It's a little bit different for me because I own a computer business. I'm actually using this computer. I'm getting use out of it so I can you know, it's part of my business to use this computer to get my work done. And on top of that, it's part of showing my customers, hey, this is what I could do if you ever need something like this. Um, so there's a lot of reasons for me to have this. I'm not telling you guys you should go out and do this, but a lot of those videos is to help other people that if they did decide to do something like this, maybe they're going to change their mind because of the problems I ran into. Um, or maybe they're going to say, oh, he did it so sloppy. I could do it better. I'm going to, I'm going to do it way better. And that's, that's cool. I, I hope you guys do do a better job than I did. Not that I think I did a bad job, but there's definitely ways to do things better. Um, so $4,900, a little bit over that is what the retail price would be on this stuff. And I, I probably paid, I paid actually a lot less than 3,800 because I, I, I'm not going to tell you guys what I pay for some of this stuff. Cause I get wholesale costs, but it was a little bit, you know, it would have been less than 3,800. And that's still a ton of money for a computer. You know, most of the computer systems that we sell here to our customers are probably between $300 and $600. That's probably the average. Those are all, you know, for a full gaming system, more on the basic side. I'm not expecting anyone to ever want to order something like this from me, but it was a fun process and learning how to do all this stuff is also a really good experience. Um, but let's talk about some of the tools that I used and I highly recommend getting these tools if you're ever gonna try a, a PETG type. If you're gonna do rigid, this is P called PETG, rigid tubing. If you're gonna do a rigid tubing computer build, the, a lot of this stuff is, in my opinion, a necessary thing. So I, I did order, I bought a brand new Dremel. You might already have a Dremel. You don't actually need one for PETG, but if you're doing any case modifications, like what I ended up having to do, you definitely always want, having a Dremel, if you're doing a lot of computer building, is always super important to have. So I got a really high end one, it's 200 bucks. You can get them for like 50 bucks or 80 bucks. But the one I had bought came with like a bit, you know, it's this one down here. It's a mess down there, but it came with a bunch of accessories. Um, safety glasses, I got some DeWalt's that have anti-fog. Um, I got a 3M branded respirator. Um, and so that stuff, if you're dremeling, then you wanna make sure you're you're using the respirator and the, the uh, eye protection. Um, now for the PETG stuff, there's a XSPC branded easy cut and bend tool kit. It's only a little bit shy of $20. I highly recommend it. There's some other 
other companies that make uh, kits as well. And those kits look really good, but I think a lot of them are also around like 60 bucks. And this excess PC kit will do it for you. The cutter is extremely important and some of the other things. You also, you know what I don't have on this list is I don't have a, um, what is that called? It's like one of those heaters. Sorry, I'm mind blanking on what it's called, but uh, it's one of those heaters that you use. It's kind of like a blow dryer. Um, <laughs> you guys can just laugh at me and you probably know what I'm talking about. So um, in any case, I didn't put that on here and you need to use that to bend the tubing. I didn't do any bends, so I didn't need it. Uh, and then finally a Hitachi DB 3D L2 3.6 volt lithium ion cordless screwdriver for one of these guys. These are awesome. I think we have like 10 of them all around the warehouse because we use these at work every day. They're rechargeable. They're great. They have a lot of power. Um, they're, they're perfect for what we do. You can bend it like that for to get a different angle. Um, highly recommend getting one of these guys just for everything around your house and especially for using on computers. So that's it. Um, I'm done. I'm going to put this in my office, connect it to my 49 inch Samsung ultra wide monitor. And, uh, I'm going to start getting some work done on this thing, guys. So, uh, please let me know what you think of it. Feel free to, uh, hit me with your trolls, you edgelords out there. And, um, I'm looking forward to especially hearing what you guys think about this panel and whether you think I should put it on or not. And I'm going to, hit you with one more thing before we end the video here okay last thing before we end the video this is a zotac mining video card no display out this is a p102-100 5 gig video card um, now what this really is is a gtx 1080 ti so extremely high in graphics card with the memory video memory basically cut in half and no video outputs and uh linus has done a video in the past few months where they took a six gig 1060 card and uh, it was a mining card just like this with no video outputs. They had some, I think they called them like modified NVIDIA drivers. They were able to use that to get almost the same performance by using their onboard graphics for their video display. So I am planning to do a video with this and trying to replicate what they did and then find out how fast this is for gaming with only five gigs instead of 11 gigs. Um, and I have, actually a box with a bunch more of them in here um so this is going to be pretty exciting for me to, to test out because these are i'm not going to tell you what i paid for them but it is a really good deal and if they perform even close to a 1080 it's a really good deal so i if that sounds fun to you be hit it be watching my videos or my uh what is it my channel i guess subscribe and hit the notification thing if you're looking forward to something like that um, i'm hoping to be doing that next week and uh for everyone that stay through through this video i appreciate it and go check out some of the other videos if you're interested in how the progress developed on this build and i feel like an idiot because i did not talk about the viper memory right there i just realized it's 4133 megahertz all right guys have a good day